Hey, hey, happy campers. Welcome, Welcome back. back to Camp Shady Bird. <laughs> week 19. Ooh. Can you believe it, girls? Week 19. We do this every single week. It could be any number. And we're going to say, can you believe it? They're like, guys, like, just we get believe it. <laughs> We believe it. We're happy to be back. We had a really great week last week. We had a lot of fun with um, last week's episode. And it was really awesome. A lot of people reached out. And they were really obsessed with the videos. And we have a lot of new campers on Camp Shady Bird this week so we are excited to get into a new episode Ooh, and welcome to all our new campers yes this is camp shady birch um so council jonathan yeah what did we do this week was last night a doozy or what well two nights ago you were like should we just buy plane tickets and like leave the country you wanted to go to canada Wait, for a minute yeah and we you- got the book out and everything. You wouldn't let me buy plane tickets because, okay, listen to this, girlies, okay? I wanted it to be adventurous and fun. And I was like, where can we just go somewhere for 24 hours? People do shit like that all the time on TikTok. So I was like, let's go to Montreal for a day. And the flights weren't even expensive. But then I read your temperature and I said, it's 12 degrees there on that to, on Sunday. And you were like, we're not going. Well, you said it's 12 degrees. Can you walk 10 miles in 12 degrees? Um, and also be, get our ponchos and by the big... Um, waterfall. I almost called it Fawcett. You thought Niagara Falls was next to Vancouver, and you need to be honest about that with yourself. I don't know. I don't know much about Canada. You were gonna double down on that. So you looked at me. You're like, "Yes, it is." And I said, "Baby, look at your phone right now." You thought Niagara Falls was next to Vancouver. I didn't know. Do all, you guys know where it is? I feel like everybody does but me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good with the map. I'm not good with the map. Anyways, we were gonna go to Canada for a day, and then we ended up not. So, so instead, of, in lieu of Canada, we did decide to go uh, see Harry Potter on Broadway. (laughs) Yeah, Harry Potter and the Cursed Tile. That's what we did last night. So yeah, it was like, that happened Saturday when we were going to like travel the world and then we were like, absolutely not. So then Sunday morning we woke up late. I woke up like really like late. I was like in bed till like 10, which I hate doing that. I'm like, get me up. I want to be like active and fun. So we had like a good morning or whatever. I Peloton, you were um, on your computer doing your, you're always on your computer. I'm not sure what you're ever doing on there. I don't know what I'm doing either. I'm a lot of clicking and clacking away. (laughs) Pretend I open the calculator app sometimes, (laughs) just crunching numbers, you know? You were always on your computer. I'm like, what are you doing on there? And I don't, th- yeah, exactly. You don't even know what you're doing on there. Yeah. Well, anyways, we were on the couch <laughs> and I looked at you and I said, do you want to go to a show tonight? And he was like, yeah, what show? And I was like, let me see what's available. A couple of the shows that we wanted to see were not available, but I had been hearing some hoo-ha. I had been hearing some, some hoopla. I've been hearing some hullabaloo. <laughs> Traditional hullabaloo about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So I bought us last minute tickets that were very expensive. Yeah. They were, should I just say how much they were? Um, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Yeah, four twenty four dollars a piece campers, okay? It was a lot. And yeah, and that's a lot of money spent. They were amazing seats, really last minute Sunday show, but like that's how much they cost. And guess what, guys? They, when I looked at the site, four tickets left. When I got there, the girls sat next to us, I said, oh, you bought them right after me because we were the last four in the whole theater. So it was amazing. But beforehand, we had to get a little grub. We ha- we ha- I can never go to a show and not eat before. No. That'd be foolish. Yeah, it would be foolish. We tried to record this podcast before we ate, and that turned out to be a bad idea. We just have to have something in our tummies. Where do we go? Tell the girls. Today? <laughs> no, yesterday. Oh, so there's this restaurant called Baco de Baco. Not to be confused with Buca de Pepo. No, it's not Buca de Pepo because they're not involved with this one. No, no neither is Dori. Dori is gets- <laughs> not involved in this. There's no lemon room in Baco de Baco. <laughs> My God, it's so good. You should call it Back to Back. Yeah, because that. we've been there back to back. We've been there six times this year. Today, wait, no, not six times this year. Two times this year, three times this year. We've been two times this year because we went the thirtieth. I didn't count. We've been six times since we've moved here. Sorry, I was like adjusting myself down. There. Yeah, I saw <laughs> what you were doing. There was, was a camera. Trying- Trying to keep my eyes up here, everyone. I'm sorry. Things were getting crushed down there. Um, we've been to Baco de Baco, you guys. It's an Italian restaurant. There's three locations in New York. We've been six times since we moved here. We have ranked the locations. I don't even know how to tell you guys which one's which. The one we liked the most, which I couldn't tell you if I wanted to, we've been there three times. Yeah, we we call it... Um, OG. Yeah, the OG one. So if you know, you know. And then the other one we went one time with my brother, and that was okay. That one was okay. That one was in Chelsea. Not my favorite, the one in Chelsea. The one in the theater district, that's the other one that we went to twice. We went to that one because it's right next to the show. Hell's Kitchen, more like Heaven's Kitchen, baby. They are killing it over there. They're killing it over there. Jonathan and I, okay, this is like what we want to say. This is the whole point of telling you about this restaurant. We do this thing that like if we know we like something, we will just continue to get it. 
I always. don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. What do you always get? At Baco de Baco? Yeah. You want to know my order? I get the shrimp penne a la vodka. And I will never stray from it. Every time I go in, I'm like, I'm going to peruse the menu. I'm going to look around a little bit. They don't serve a wedge salad. So that's a plus in my book. But I know I'm always going to get what I'm comfortable with. Their vodka sauce is out of this world. And it's, I know that it's going to be good. I know it's going to be al dente. Yeah. And I know what I'm going to get. And I know there's a plate that's there waiting for me. It's like comfort. And I love it. What do you always get? I always get the chicken parm because it's phenomenal. They they pound that cutlet till it's the size of a dollar bill. All right. That thing is crispy. And it's huge. But recently, recently, I have been asking to sub the red sauce for the vodka sauce because that vodka sauce really is lights out. It's amazing. A fat piece of basil on top. They saute the pasta with basil as well. Big pieces of it is just we go there all the time. We walk in, we're like, hi guys. They're like, we literally don't care who or know who you are. And we're like, oh, you guys are so silly. Anyways, we'll get the usual. They're like, what the hell's your usual? We don't know you guys, but <laughs> Brian. <laughs> it's like my name is Tim. <laughs> yeah. We got a bottle of wine last night too, because it was $35. And I said, let's be economical. Yeah. We know we're gonna get more than two glasses. So let's we just get, we get the bottle. And that's when I learned I came to this conclusion last what? night. That if you continuously refill your wine glass before it gets completely empty, mm -hmm. then technically you're only drinking one glass of wine. It's only one glass of wine if the glass never becomes empty because you're kind of just topping it off, okay? Yeah, I'm just topping it off. Just a little here, a little there. You know what we said last night was? We're what? like, oh, it's a, it's one glass of wine with a reprise. Yeah. It's the same <laughs> song. It's the same it's glass the same. of wine. Exactly. Just so as a little arrangement different. We each have one glass of wine there. Exactly. Yeah, because I was like, stop filling my glass. I haven't even finished it. And you're like, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a mental, it's mind over matter. And I don't know how that applies here, but it does. So after Baco de Baco, the debauchal at Baco de Baco, we went to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Guys, if you don't like Harry Potter, this is not the show for you. If you are a casual fan into the deep fandom, it is for you. Look, I don't read the books. Did you read the books? Uh, yeah, I read the books. All of them? Yeah, I I won one of them in a uh, competition. I had to write a poem about what I would do if I had Harry Potter's powers. And I knew what to say to win, and I did. Well, I think you need to finish the story here because there's more to the story, isn't there? Oh, just, yeah. So You're leaving out I, the best details of the story, <laughs> so just tell them the whole story. So I was promised winning this competition that was writing to the Chicago Tribune that I would be given the Harry Potter book. I think it was the fourth one. Before it came out, before it was made public, I was going to receive it. Um, I did end up receiving it, but they sent it to me two weeks late. And I was so furious that I wrote a letter to the president of the United States of America, uh, George W. Bush, and I put it in the mailbox. And I didn't know until like two years later, my mom took it out of the mailbox and kept it because she thought it was so funny and obnoxious of me to write a letter. And in the front and back, front and back, loose leaf paper, three holes, single spaced it was a lot and college i was like ruled? yeah college ruled, <laughs> of course and i was like I, I know you're really busy georgie but i was supposed to get this harry potter book and um and uh, it was promised to me and they didn't pull through and you seem like an honest man george so don't let me down i'm nine years old and i will be disappointed um all that to say i got the book late but yeah i read all the harry potter books i'm like you were giving a serious care and energy right there i was i was upset because that was like I had nothing else. I was like, so when I won, of course I was going around the playground. I had nothing else. I had nothing else. I was going around the playground being like, oh, I'm going to be reading the Harry Potter book before anybody else. And that was, I need to check myself. Self-reflection time right now. I'm thinking back. You can't just be, you can't be bragging about that because karma, karma is my boyfriend. Karma is a bitch and slapped me in the tits. Well, karma is a God and God said, absolutely not. For you and then the book came out and everybody got it because and then you're like no no no, i'm not buying it because i'm getting a, a purse science copy from the chicago tribune and they're like yeah when it goes on sale they'll send you one <laughs> I can't. all this to say jonathan has read the books i have not but i've seen all the movies and the show picks up i think what like 15 years after they've had kids mm -hmm. so harry has a kid with Janie, obviously and then ron and hermione have a kid and then it's draco's kid and they're all going to, they're all going to hogwarts and it like just it's all like what what's gonna happen these kids always find a way to get themselves in trouble always do um but it was really fun i was just so impressed by um i was talking about instagram like i was so impressed by like the technicality and like the stage i don't know like it was just the the transitions the special effects is the word i'm looking for it was incredible 
What was your favorite special effect? Oh my God, there was one part where the floor opened up and there was a damn swimming pool. Yep. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was expecting the the wands, the lightsabers, like to like shoot fire and do fun stuff. But when they opened that floor and there was a swimming pool that they were in, I was like, I'm sorry. I was not, I didn't see that coming. The Dementors. There was Dementors flying from the ceiling. They were probably 12 feet tall with like these insane like draped clothing. They would fly over the audience and on the stage for these certain scenes. And it was like, I I felt like it was a real Dementor. Like it literally is what I would envision one to be like the scale of one. It was like actually scary. It, it was, was scary. The one dropped, the one that dropped into the audience dropped right, right above you. I know. And the cloth that whatever they're made out of yeah, lo- was fabulous. so flowy. It looked like CGI, but I was like, but we're not watching the movie. We're watching it IRL. It was so good. It was, I loved it. Fantastic. They had this one scene where the kids, like in the very beginning, to the very beginning of the show, where they're like going to go on the platform nine and three quarters and they have their little trolley cards and they run towards the audience with the carts and there's like this big bang of music. And I don't know how they did it, but somehow their entire costumes changed from like street clothing to like their like their their robes for the school how did they do that there was no twirl or anything it just happened i couldn't that was in the first like five minutes and i said oh no 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 guys they're the wands are blowing up they're swinging at it there's the, the there's giant moving um staircases there's they're coming through fireplaces they're they're literally changing bodies on stage in the same cloak like it is moaning myrtle comes out of the ground okay an entire and i'm not giving anything away because you i could go on for this for hours guys and i like if you you like Harry Potter to any extent, these tickets were worth it. I had no qualms at all. Oh my God. Qualmless. Call me qualmless. Let me say something about this too. In the middle of the intermission, something happens. I won't tell you what happens. And you come out to get like your drinks to the bathroom thing. And the entire lobby has changed into what's happening in the play. Like it's different from when you first went in there. Even the even the outfits of the employees have then changed. Are you kidding me right now? M- merch that was on the shelves had changed. I was like, Oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It was so good. It was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. Loved it, loved it. Can't loved say enough good child. things about it. Well, that's what we did. So we didn't go to Montreal. We saw Harry Potter on Broadway instead. Yeah. <laughs> Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements, guys. Attention campers. The hula hoops? What's going on with the hula hoops? A majority of the hula hoops have been returned to the activity shed, either broken or with some sticky substance on it. Guys, we've talked about this before in assemblies, but hula hoop hygiene is of utmost importance. (laughs) And we have been giving out wet wipes since day one. So I don't know why some of you don't think you need to use it, but you need to reconsider because we're going to have to start selling off things from the lost and found to pay for new hula hoops. Some of them have cracks in them, smudges, one caught fire. So just please, hula hoop hygiene. Let's just keep it up. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, I went into the activity shed the other day and I noticed that there was this brown goo all over the hula hoops. And I said, is that sap? And I smelt it. You know what it smelled like? What? Barbecue sauce. (laughs) We had the rib jamboree. And the kids went in, you kids, the campers went in there and you took the hula hoops before wiping your little grubby hands. And now we're going to have a bee problem in the activity shed. And Sandwich, as you know, is allergic. Severely to barbecue sauce. So you're killing him with your lack of hula hoop hygiene. Uh, Besides the point, we were just listening to Girls Next Level podcast. Hula hoop is a trademarked word. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I didn't know that. What what are they called? Hoop activity hoops. Also, the same company <laughs> also um, trademarked slip and slide. And they they were getting pissed at the girls on the show for saying slip and slide. They're like, oh, that's a trademark name. First of all, whoever that parent company is, grow up, okay? It's a hula hoop. It's a slip and slide. You may have coined the term, but like... Get over it. I'm not gonna call it an activity hoop. Yeah, what would you call a slip and slide? A, a wet, a water tarp? Yeah, water tarp, oily tarp, slide on the tarp. It's always yeah. a tarp, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Yeah, and they hurt. They do. You, you get burn. I, you will not find me on a slip and slide. You won't find me on a water slide. I'm, I'm all set with that. You'll find me on both. <laughs> Anyways, this is uh, morning announcements. Well, well, actually, really quickly before we get into that, should we do some housekeeping from last week? Let's do some housekeeping. Yay. You have a little announcement you want to do? Too. Um, guys, really big news. I finished my book. Yes, queen. Oh, sorry. Shh. Yes, queen. 
Yes, we're in the library. Um, yeah, so I was reading a book I talked about a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I'm going to finish it, and then I didn't, um, but then I did. So it all came full circle. The book is called Stay True, a memoir by Hua Su, and it was about um, a first-generation um, Asian immigrant coming to the country and, like, um, well, like, going to college in the late 90s and his experiences, like, making friends and kind of coming into his own as an adult. And, um, spoiler alert, his... his um, best friend dies in the first 20 pages of the book and then they kind of like backtrack and you kind of like learn the whole like ups and downs of that friendship and how like friendship really is like I don't know like the motivation or like keeps things moving in life and it was so beautifully written the last page I was blubbering like a baby it was just like so great like the writer of the book um who he is a staff writer for the New York Times so he's like really obviously a great writer and um it's just a beautiful book and I'm really proud to say two weeks into January I have finished my first book and I haven't read a book in like four years very proud of you thank you very I am. proud well if you need the fourth harry potter book i've got two copies oh my god i want the one from the chicago tribune signed by president george <laughs> w bush you imagine my mom like forged a signature on the inside yeah you know because you well if it wasn't forged by her it would have been forged by laura uh, laura bush laura, laura bush. lorna dune lorna dune is my favorite laura anyways anything well, from you i just i'm i'm proud of you and i'm happy for you and and we're gonna keep a little um a little sticker chart of oh, the books that you read i would love that because you used to lie on that when i was in like elementary school and they had that like track the track the book chart yeah i was like i don't know i read a book today and i just wanted that pizza party at the end of the class and she's like zachary did you really read chrysanthemum and i was like i don't know did i and she's like okay we'll give you a gold star but i don't think you did <laughs> so, that was an easy read chrysanthemum yeah we all read chrysanthemum that was a good one <laughs> Anyways, enough about me and my bookworm talk. Okay. Do you have any announcements yes. that you want to catch up on? Let me just hook up to let me hook up my Ethernet cable. This dial up. Hold on, please. We did have a uh, camper email us because today, as we've already mentioned, week 19 and last week was week 18. So she emails and says, Hi. I am 18 weeks pregnant and I love growing right alongside you guys. Aww. I thought it was so funny how you brought up pregnancy today. And I've been thinking about emailing you this since I found out I was pregnant. We're having a future camper baby boy. Also, name suggestions would be great. LOL. My husband and I cannot agree on one. Love you guys tons. Growing weekly with you. That is so cute. Love knocked up and fatigued in cabin seven. Congratulations. Oh my god, it's our first camp baby. Yeah, that's so cute. And that's crazy because literally when we're when we will be celebrating our 40th week, I will be emailing her and being like, Yeah, happy baby. Happy, happy baby. <laughs> um, but let's can we just struggle a couple of names? Just a couple of names. Yeah, let's do a couple of names. Um, these I don't I don't know. I'm not really good with boy names unless it's Ethan and the big apple. But I, I like the name inertia. Yeah, you've always said that about that word. I think it's gender fluid and it's it can be boy or girl. And it, I think that that's a pretty name. It's giving movement for sure. Um, I'm going to give the name Maxwell because I really enjoy their coffee. Maxwell oh. Coffee is sponsoring today's episode at Camp Shady Birch. No, they're, they're not. They're looking not. for a cup of gold, no one, gold brew. No one's looking for a cup of Sorry. Maxwell was my name. Your name next. Um, I do like the name Felony. Oh. Uh, with an I-E. F-E-L-O-N-I-E. I think would be nice. For a boy? Or a girl. Or they, them. I think it's a nice name. It's like Melanie. Oh, I, I'm, seeing where you're, I'm, I'm seeing what you're stepping in. Um, to bring it back on track here, I'm going to go with the name Ezekiel. Ezekiel. You, you love that name. I love a biblical name. I'm not sure if that's in the Bible, but it gives Bible to me. Yeah. Okay, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, I like that. We have to say it like this. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Like the bread. Ezekiel. Do you have any more? Citronella. Wow, that is on brand for the camp. I like that a lot. I think that's a pretty name. Yeah. Um, one more for me. I'm gonna say um tundra. I like that. Yeah. That's pretty. It's masculine, it's giving outdoors. Yeah. It's giving snow. I like it. An Arctic tundra. Arctic. Arctic. Arctic tundra Peterson. I don't know if that's your last name. Yeah, we're just, assuming I'm cabin just... seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you use any of those names, please just give us a little credit on the birth certificate and like really tiny writing. We would love that. Thank you so much. Congrats, camper. Yeah, congratulations. Um, do you want to move on to articles? Yeah, let's move on to um, our morning announcements. Like, what are the articles that we're reading this week that we're like, hey, we have to share with our campers because they're just too good to not share. Do you want to start? Do you want me to go first? Um, why don't you go ahead and go first? 
Okay, everybody. I don't know if you're familiar with the director, Michael Bay. Mm. Does he ring a bell? Rings a bell. Okay, so Michael Bay has directed movies such as Bad Boys, Pearl Harbor. Love that movie so much. Transformers. Um, and then what was the other one that I, I deleted? Then that movie I don't like that you guys like. Armageddon. Armageddon. I don't like that movie. I was forced to watch it a couple weeks ago. Kate, you know it was you. Um, and I just don't like it. But Michael Bay is this huge director. So he's actually in the middle of a legal trial with, um, I don't know, the Italian government for killing a pigeon. Okay. Yep. So back in 2018, he was filming this movie for Netflix called Six Underground. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it. It was with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I've heard. Someone reported the film department that they had seen a pigeon die due to a gaffer accident. What is a gaffer, Jonathan? So they're the people who would be like running either the lights or electrical stuff. They'll work with like G&E or they can also do like grips. So like any dolly worker assistance with the camera, not not hands on the camera, but like helping usually like dolly work they'll do. Yeah, that was a lot of buzzwords that I don't think helped anyone understand that didn't know what a dolly, like I don't know what a dolly is. <laughs> the it, like you put the camera on wheels and oh. it's usually it's either on a track or it's trackless and then they'll like push the camera while the cameraman did they hit the per the pigeon with the, the dolly you tell me I well didn't... it's undisclosed we don't have the details of the pigeon's death all this to say is that uh pigeons and any sort of wildlife birds are protected under the italian government so they claim that the pigeon died on set and since he is the director of the movie He's getting the charge against him, and this has been happening for years now. And um, he's been in court battling this um, pigeon lawsuit because he claims that didn't happen, and this is false accusations. And there is only a small fine for him to pay um, in consideration. But he's like, no, 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 baby. I am literally not paying this fine. Because that's an admission of guilt. And he's, it's a mission of guilt. And he's like, I am an animal rights advocate. He fights for the rights of animals. And he's like, I'm not going to say that I killed a pigeon when I didn't. So he's prepared to double down on this and take it all the way to the Italian court system. Now, can I ask who who snatched? Who was the bitch who had the snatch? They, so it's undisclosed because it is Italian pigeon court. So they can't <laughs> say names. But um, yeah, I was shocked. I was appalled. And I want to believe Michael Bag. I don't really care for him that much i will say that i did love pearl harbor but um other than that i'm not a huge like i don't know i have them to gain from his failure so i i want i want the truth to come out is what i'm saying yeah i am curious to know if it was someone who was on set or someone like a bystander who said something yeah so um it was really interesting i was i want to learn more about pigeons after reading this article oh, go off because i i get really emotional when I think about pigeons, like I'm already welling up thinking about them. I, I can't look at my crying. I can't believe this. I just think people are really mean to pigeons and I, they don't deserve it. They are, they're a simple, beautiful bird and they, and they've gotten a lot of crap. And let me just tell you a couple of things I learned about them. In the 1600s, they came over to America from French colonizers from the coasts of Africa. And these pigeons in, they were coastal birds by nature. And they were used to perching on like, some sort of like cliffs on cliffs, right? So that's why they like New York so much because they're not tree birds, okay? They like to be on ledges. That's where they're most comfortable and like bound to their like core. And we needed them so much back in the day for like messenger pigeons all throughout history and even into World War II. And after World War II happened, we didn't really need them anymore. And society as a whole threw pigeons to the curb. And I, I find it to be really emotional because when I see these birds walking on the street. They just don't know what they're doing. They seem so lost and they, they always feel like they're in somebody's way and people are just so mean to them and they don't think they deserve it and it makes me really sad for them that is really sad they are always in people's way and they're like i don't know i don't belong here the, everyone like they're on a they're on a roof people are shooting them away they're on a window so people are shooting away they're on the ground people are shooting them away they just trying to live like everybody else and they're they're just like new yorkers they're so resilient okay they 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 deal with all this hardship and they just they press on and they're beautiful birds and in the 80s by the way they had a really bad p pigeon problem in new york and there was this like weird like anti-pigeon movement and someone claimed that pigeon carry like massive amounts of diseases and that's been proven by scientists to be debunked. They really don't. Not more than rats do. Like they obviously can carry some sort of diseases, but they're not like inherently dirty animals. So people put like they, they yell at them because they're like, oh, you dirty bird. And it's like they're literally like, can I just catch a break? That's sad. I know. I like really feel bad for pigeons oh cheers to pigeons guys um, that's sad do you know that they can remember no i know you know this because i've told you this before i think that pigeons can remember faces 
Yeah, I'm sure they can because they're constantly being abused. How did they know where to go with the messenger? Messenger? Messen well, they're smart. They're really smart. There's there's facts that Genghis Khan, and I, that's a buzzword, up uh, he would send them to his territories around the world. And he'd be like, hey, check on the girlies. And the pigeon would be like, okay, I'll be back. And they would come back. And he would like tell them which one. He's like, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. And like, you know, the, the, the tall one that kind of limps a little. And they're like, we got you. We know where we're going. He, th that's all they need. They, they literally are so smart. There was one more thing about pigeons I wanted to say. There's this guy in Brooklyn and he has a, like a habitat on top of his like apartment um, for 180 pigeons. And he's like, I love these pigeons. He changes their water four times a day. Like they're his pride and joy. And once every summer in August, they have this thing called the pigeon wars. And it sounds really bad, but it's not like all of like the local like pigeon keepers in New York City go to this park and they all let their pigeons go at the same time. And they all kind of like get to meet like it's like a pigeon meet and greet. And then at the end of the pigeon wars, they call it that because at the end, you see who comes back and you're it's a gamble because you might get more pigeons back and you're like oh my god i want all these pigeons or you might lose half your you might lose half your tribe they might oh, go to someone wow. else's so it's like a gamble so all these like pigeon keepers they go to the pigeon wars and they're like am i gonna get more pigeons or am i gonna lose pigeons and it's like they love it they like live for it but this guy he like he owns like a bird feeder like studio like that's not what it was at all it was like a store that <laughs> sells like bird food yeah and he has pigeons a bird foodery a boot uh, yeah it's a, a bird food, a bird food court I love that. It's like, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't want the sesame seeds today. I want sunflower. I'm going to sample the Chinese food, though. They're all <laughs> and we'll Dixie circle cups. back. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was emotional. Thanks for taking us on that journey. Yeah, um, Michael Bay, I'm rooting for you. And I yeah. never thought I'd say that. I think we all are. Yeah. I, I think, think we all are rooting for Michael Bay. I don't think that's a really harsh accusation from the Italian government. They need to stop. Um, but if you guys see any pigeons in um, at Camp Shady Birch, which you probably won't, um, unless they're perching at Camp Shady Perch, just don't shoo them away. Maybe sing them a song, ask them how their day is going, just check on check on them. Agreed. I think that's fair. Do you have an article for us? Um, I do. So this is coming from the Associated Press, and the title of this article is Swedish Government Moves to Get Rid of Permits Needed for Dancing. Oh, yes, yes. So this is feeling a little dystopian, okay? And I'm also a little disconnected from the Swedish government, as I feel like a lot of us are. Um, but let me go ahead and kind of like give you some highlights. So Sweden's government wants to abolish a decade old requirement for restaurants and nightclubs to obtain permits um, before they let patrons dance on their property. So this permit, I guess, costs 67 US dollars um, for the establishments. And I think it's an annual thing. And um, owners can lose their liquor licenses completely if cops walk by and they see people dancing and walk in and they're like, do you have a dancing permit? A dancing permit and they say no they can lose their liquor license how insane is that that is insane and like what qualifies as an actual dance and that was a question that i had hang on let me let me we'll circle back great question though a proposal was made recently um as a general rule this is all they want to have to do now they don't want to pay the 67 dollars. they want to register with the police which can be done verbally and cost nothing so i guess that kind of means like hey um officer we're going to do the cotton eye joe like is that cool and then he's probably going to be like yeah that's fine and then that's that. I don't know how nothing's going to be in writing. Um, I think it's a stupid permit to have to have $67 annually. That's also buffoonery. for what? Like for, this is like the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I know. And it also sounds like it happened really long time ago, but it's happening this week yeah. as we speak. And everybody's going to get up in the towns of Switzerland and be like, woo. And that's what I'm saying. It's very footloose and everyone in the town is really supportive of it. I'm like, well, who, who isn't? Because the government is also like, hey, we probably shouldn't be doing like this stupid law that's in place. Let's just, you know, give them a thumbs up and let them do the cotton eye joke. What if I accidentally am shaking my shoulders to the cha-cha side? I know. I was just thinking about like imagine being in a restaurant and you get like, the most gorgeous like burger of your life and you're like, oh my God. And you get a little like happy dance when you're about when you're like chewing your food. And then the bartender goes, hey, knock it off. And you're like, oh shit, I forgot it's illegal to dance here. Like, first of all, this is not a gay friendly country, okay? No. Gays always wanna dance. Girls just wanna have fun, okay? And up until now, guys, we weren't allowed to have fun there. That is so weird, weird. Like if someone sees someone who looks like they're dancing, what if they're actually not dancing? Like, because let me give you an example. I make walking look like modeling. I'm not modeling. <laughs> Others would claim, I'm being serious. Others would claim otherwise. 
You find me in the library, I'm walking to the nonfiction section, double cheeked up on a Tuesday afternoon, I'm just walking, but to you, you're like, yes, Naomi Campbell. So what if somebody's literally just walking to the bathroom, but it looks like they're doing a little Irish jig? They're just limping a little bit. What if you're at a bar and a wild bee enters the building and you're swatting it away and a cop walks by and he thinks, oh my God, that person has a bachelor's degree in crump. It's, and they go in, they get f f fined. First of all, sixty-seven dollars. That's like not even a lot of money. So if the US bar is not, if too. the bar is not paying that, guys, then if the bar cannot afford the sixty-seven dollar permit, maybe the bar's not doing well, anyways. Well, you know? let's think about how many bars are there, and do you really want to, every single bar is sending sixty-seven? That's a lot. Sending it to the man, to yeah. Uncle, Uncle Sam, or whatever they have in Sweden. Sweetland? No, thank you. Yeah, well, congrats to the Swiss government. We love your cheese. We well, love... they didn't pass it yet. It's oh, they, they they still technically to this day cannot be dancing unless they have a permit. That's why, and it's probably not. They said July first is when they're anticipating on this passing if it can be passed. So they've got a long spring ahead of them, a long spring ahead of them. Good luck. We'll see you on the other side. Are we qualified to be giving advice? No. Are we going to do it anyway? Absolutely. We are back with another segment of Dear Counselors. This is the part of the show that we read some advice or we read some questions submitted by you campers and we give you our honest feedback. It can't always be great, but it's going to be honest, okay? So here we go. Dear Counselors, my boyfriend and I moved into our first apartment just over a year ago and our next door neighbor is a really creepy old guy. We call him Dave. Oh, we call Dave. I'm sorry. I don't know why you're out of the home there. Um, our apartment has a communal laundry room located in a separate building outside of the apartments. About a month into living here, I woke up to the sounds of a screaming match in the apartment hallway outside my door. It was our upstairs neighbor yelling at Dave. Dave was apparently looting their laundry. That neighbor moved away shortly after. One time, my boyfriend was watching me leave the laundry room after switching our clothes over and actually witnessed Dave walking up to our dryer and opening it. When we approached Dave, he denied it. Liar. One time, I bought two identical pairs of panties because they were cute and they both disappeared within a week of each other. The last straw for me was when he literally stood over my shoulders and watched me put the laundry in despite not having his own laundry or any reason to be in the laundry room. Ew. I told my elderly landlord about the issue and he seems to be doing nothing. What should I do? First of all, this is so vile, so gross. We had to bring it to the camp. We had to bring it to all of you because this is a this is a really tricky issue and I'm really upset. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I can start. Okay. I feel like there's a couple of different things that are going on in, in this old head of mine. But an honest piece of advice, that is that is uh, fucked up that your landlord's not going to do anything about it if you've like reported it. Um, I would say, here's a plan. Get a pair of underwear that either you don't care about or maybe like buy a new pair that are, that's cheap. And we're going to take a brown magic marker and we're going to put a little... A little skid mark on the inside and a, a, across the butt on the outside you're gonna write i know what you did and soon they will too <gasps> that is scary and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna post up i'm in my head i feel like it's like a little stairwell it's it's executing greatly in my head i don't know logistically if it's gonna actually work but you hide in the stairwell and you wait like how your boyfriend took this picture and like take a picture of him taking or like opening up the dryer and like looking at your panties or someone else's underwear. I hate the word panties, by the way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Kinko's and we're going to print out some copies. You just need 10. That's pretty much it. You're going to put one on his door. You're going to put it all over the lobby of the apartment building being like, we know what you did, like panty panty stealer, panty stealer, because he's stolen how many of your panties to so then what you're going to do after that is you're going to write up an invoice. You're going to figure out how much money he owes you from the stuff that he stole and he's going to pay you. You're going to slide it under your door. You're going to give him 30 days. And if he doesn't Venmo you the money, then um, then you take him to court. Um, I think it's a good idea. I would take it a step further. I would approach him one on one and say, listen, you grubby little gross pig. I know exactly what you're doing. And it's not only disgusting, it's theft. I've installed a pair of cameras in the laundry room that face directly at the washing machines. If you steal anything from me ever again, I will have these digitally reported to the police, not only for theft, but I will post this on the local Facebook group and let everybody know that you are not just stealing from me, but you're also like a pedophile creep. Okay. So you better 
either back the fuck up or I will literally ruin your life, you disgusting old pig. And if the apartment's not that nice, maybe just move. But if it is worth the rent, like, I would I would buy the $40 pair of cameras on Amazon and just prop them up. I'm not even joking. Prop them up and say, you're being recorded with a smiley face because he needs to have, and your and your elderly landlord, I'm sorry. Being old is not an excuse for not, like, okay, is the check clearing, babe? Is my rent clearing? Because it's paying for your bills. So then do your job and step up. I don't care how old his elderly landlord is. Knock on his door and say, hey, man, unless you want me to pay my rent this month, you better address this because I'm paying into this pot that you're not taking care of. Yeah, and that's sick. Like, everybody should feel comfortable in their own home. So this should not be... And he's next door. Was he next door or upstairs? He's in the building, and there's on the property. It's probably like a garage that they have, like, the laundry in. Yeah. So I don't know how many units are in the building. It's giving three tenements to me, and that's what I'm going to go with. And that's why, you guys, I will never live in another apartment in my entire life that doesn't have laundry in it because it's disgusting. I don't trust people. I, I went to laundromats for years, and I would wait in the car because I just didn't want people to, like go through my stuff. You can't leave things because people are gross. And he's stealing your underwear. So it's like sexual and gross and dirty. And he's also robbing you. He's yeah. robbing you. They're not cheap. Panties are not cheap. Yeah. So I just think this has, um, uh, honestly, get the law involved. Get the law involved. But before you do that, just scare him a little bit. Snap those pictures because if you move out and then it's not your problem anymore, you are doing, not that it's your responsibility, but I feel like you're doing someone else a favor if it scares him to like stop him from ever doing it again. Like if you choose to move out, the next person who moves in, he's going to do the same shit too because he's a fucking creepazoid. But if you blow him up, put it on Facebook, send it into 6 ABC News, Action Now News, Channel 9 News, any news outlet that you want to. And just be like, this is the panty, panty snatcher. And this is his face, and he's a fucking weirdo, and he owes me at least $37. Yeah, we're sorry, camper. Put those cameras in. We love you. Grab your bug juice and bear spray, campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back once again to Take a Hike, the part of the show where we bitch a little. We talk about what's been grinding our gears, what we're complaining about. So, you know when you're talking to somebody, and they're looking at you in the eye, and then their eye shifts from your eye contact to somewhere on your face. Mm -hmm. So that happened to me and I started getting really self-conscious and this person kept looking at like my ear and then like leaning a little bit and like looking a little bit harder. I was like, what the hell is on my face? And it's somebody that I, I haven't really, like I don't really know that well. So I'm just trying to have a cordial. Like if it was you, I'd be like, what are you staring at, bitch? But I couldn't do that in this situation. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, what is on my face? Is it a booger? Is it like ketchup or something? And the eye contact was nodding and talking to me like they're talking to me, but literally like leaning and looking at my ear or my beard or something. After that, I was so thrown off. I couldn't even finish. I didn't even know what I was saying. Almost like in this moment, I was like, I, I couldn't finish my thought. I was stumbling over my words like, fucking Ariel when she first got her legs. I didn't know what to say. I went to the bathroom, checked the mirror. Nothing was there. I'll never know to this very day what it was. It threw me off. It threw me off. I couldn't hold a conversation. Nothing's thrown me off like that. Except for that one time my CVS pharmacist called me ma'am on the phone like two weeks ago. That was embarrassing. Threw me off. Yeah, I think they were looking at your gauges. And now that you say that, that is valid. Yeah, they probably were looking at those ears and saying those are some big holes in the ears. I wonder if that hurt. But I do, yeah, it's a, it's it's beyond it's beyond this specific example. It is to the greater good. When you're talking to somebody, try to lock in on those eyes, okay? One time I was working in a movie theater and there was a guy with the world's largest white head I've ever seen. This thing had a zip code, okay? It was, I was like, that that needs to be drained or something. Like it was a pimple popper's dream. And I stood there in solidarity with this man and locked into his eyes the entire conversation. I can't believe it was like north quadrant of his head, like above his eyebrow. And it would have been real easy for my eyes to wander up there. But I didn't because I'm respectful and I'm nice. Okay. Wow. And whoever did that to you, I want I want their number and I want their address and I'm going to go steal the underwear out of their dryer. Okay. <laughs> Don't That's what do I'm going to do. No, I know what you mean. That is rude. Take a hike on that. Take a hike. I also wonder because sometimes when I'm like looking at someone, I'm like, I wonder what this person would do if I like throw a hot coffee at them. Like I would never do that. And it's like, I don't, it's just something takes over in my head. So I wonder if they were looking at it. Like, I wonder if I put a bike lock, like a bike lock on that, what would happen? Cause that's something I would think about if I was talking to someone with gauges, if they were even looking at that, I don't know. Yeah, but they shouldn't zone out onto the ear. That's the whole conversation here. Like you can graze over, you can look cause you're a human, but don't like lock in on that. Cause I'm like, okay, who am I talking to? Yeah, it did make me uncomfy. But um, take a hike. What's your take a hike? 
Uh, my take a hike this week is people who want to play um, complicated games during parties. Um, you need to check yourself. You need to stop. You need to read the room. And most importantly, you need to relax, okay? We are at a party. There is alcohol involved, okay? You've introduced a game to me that is 15 steps. And at each step, there's different versions of what can happen next based on the what's happening in the game, okay? I'm trying to relax. I've had three cocktails at this point. I'm asking people around me who has a marble menthol, okay? I'm trying to smoke a cigarette. I'm not trying to play this brand new game I've never heard of, okay? Stop pushing games on people at a party. We're just talking. It's fine. Isn't that annoying? It is annoying when it's, and you can tell they're really excited about it and they just want to play, but it's like, it is très difficile to like follow. I have a hard time. I'm, I learn as I go. Yeah. So you can teach me as much as you want, but like, I'm more of a visual learner an active learner. Mm -hmm. So I can like learn while we do it. But yeah, no, I agree. Especially because it's like when you're drinking and when that box opens and someone's ready to start playing or those cards come out and they're mm -hmm. like, let's play Rummy 420. And I'm like, a new twist on a game that I barely know. Let's not. Okay. I totally got it. I agree. Yeah. And I always feel like they're like five minutes into the directions and then it ends up being like, I'll just get it as we go. Let's just start. Let's just start. Like it always ends up. Like, I'm a visual learner. I'll just pick it up. Just let me know as we go. And it's like, that never ends well. Okay. I've, I've written down a couple of games that I think are appropriate for when you're drinking that if you really need to play a game, we can handle it. Duck, duck, goose. And that can get the crowd going. Um, would you rather? That's an easy one. Yeah. Um, truth or dare? Um, or just the classic beer pong, a game that involves tossing a ball into a cup and you're just drinking. Those are games. But I always feel like it's a game I've never heard of. Like it's it's a chicken cutlet chaser. <laughs> Ruby runneth over. It's like put the stack of cards <laughs> away. I don't want to play this right now. It's it's just so annoying. It's a lot. There was a. It's game. always that one bitch too. <laughs> these games, these games, she really big game. Girl, you have anxiety. I can see it. Okay, you need to be doing something. The rest of us are vibing, and you're throwing it off. Go outside, smoke a cigarette, chill. Like it's that one girl. No, we really should play a game. No, you really need to have steamrolling this conversation. No one wants to play a game right now. I hate that girl. I do. I hate her. Take a hike. But I I do love, I love like playing games at a party, but the simpler, the better. Uno. Love it. The one that we played with, with your sister and brother-in-law. That was fun. But what also. Was that called? Wait, what was it called? Skulls. It was like the coaster game. That was a fun one. Ray, that was, Ray's listening. Ray, that was borderline. You had, it was, you hit the five minute mark and the instructions were still coming and thank God we picked it up, but well, that was borderline. Now, hold on. The reason that it was border, you had. He had me explain the directions and I was talking loud. There was a baby asleep oh upstairs God, and I was screaming. so drunk and didn't realize it. And you were like, Jonathan, you're yelling. And I was like, oh my God, I'm yelling. <laughs> you were ye and there was what? three people at the table. What were you yelling? You were literally, there's a baby upstairs and you're like, directions. <laughs> I, I've I was like, Jonathan, like just... Told. I don't know. No, and that's the thing too. It's there. There. Okay. If it's a small gathering, a game may be appropriate. I'm talking about a mixture with 20 people, and that girl comes out. Let's say a game. Yeah. Game game. Yeah. Girl, put that side bang away and <laughs> step outside. I'm all set with her. She, you know who she is. She and who invited her? It wasn't me. Oh my god. There's just certain there. I I'm a game person. I love to play games, but. If you've hit a level of intoxication, there's no need for a game. We're all vibing. Yeah. Catch up or or smoke a cigarette and relax. And there is a fine line between like, well, when you have to read the room, like if the crowd read isn't the into it, they're not into it. But you got to do it on the when people are sober and having their first drink or are on their first drink, merging into their second drink, second drink into third drink is dangerous territory. That's when you're going to, people are going to be talking over each other. Someone's thinking they're playing Mancala, but you guys are really playing like Chinese checkers. That's when you need to decide that it's over. You should have played the game. This is not time for Othello. I'm sorry. I love that. Take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Crash. 
Crash, 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 Two, crash, three, four, crash. nothing compares to a quiet evening alone listening to ooh, Camp Counselor's podcast with us. Oh, <laughs> ah, that was good. Thank you. I love that. We did. Get, you mentioned Paramore last week and you brought it to us this week. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I love Haley and I love our crush of the week. This is the part of the episode where we just say what we're crushing on, who we're crushing on, what we're crushing on, who we want to kiss, who we want to snog and all that good jazz. Um, Counselor Jonathan. Yeah. Who are you crushing on this week? So it's a little less of a who and more of a what. Well, I guess Love it, that. it could be a who, I suppose. So we were watching RuPaul's Drag Race and Spice came out and the um I think the category was metallic or something. So she came out as like a 2000s Y2K pop star and had with her one of those robot dogs from the 2000s. You remember those? I dog, of course. Well, it wasn't the eye dog. This was like the robotic something that it didn't really do much besides like eat a bone. But my crush of the week is the eye dog. I loved that little eye dog. I had two. My first one broke. His ear fell off. But before that, I remember I would take my iPod mini second generation, which weighed like 14 pounds and only held 14 songs. <laughs> and I would plug it right into the, was it like in his butt? I, feel I like don't the know. Cord I, was in his butt. I had that dog on the show. I didn't have the eye dog. So the eye dog was the small white one. That one was like a big gray one that you could like. I had that one with the, with the bone, with the magnetic bone. But it didn't play music. No, it didn't. It just walked. So this one played, it was like a speaker essentially. Fierce. And the speaker quality was comparable to a McDonald's drive through speaker. At the time though, it, you didn't think that. You were, no. pretty, you were pretty happy with what you yeah, got. Of course not. And that's why I would absolutely blast uh, Kelly Clarkson, Breakaway, and it would change colors. The lights on the head would change just colors. Ask that. I was just going to ask that. Mm -hmm. I and it remember. Would, I it would up. turn its head and it had little... Um, it had ears that would kind of go back and forth, but they were like a cheap, clear plastic. And it didn't really do much besides turn its head and you could like push its nose and all that stuff. But it would pick up on the music you were listening to and it would change colors depending. For me, I didn't really see that much of a difference. If I played pop music, it would do more like blue and pink. But for the most part, it kind of just did like the same kind of lights. Forever. It was a selling point for them. But anyway, the eye dog, everybody on my block had one. If you didn't have one, you were like yikes but it really didn't do much besides being like a speaker but i guess at the time because we didn't have speakers that you didn't i think it was the ipod touch where it started having speakers in the bottom of it so we didn't really have speakers that connected to it like that did the ears go up and down too they didn't go up and down they like went out it was like on a little cute little hinge do you have a picture yeah i do yeah so see how his ears are out there they would like fly out and they would like tuck in, but they didn't, they really didn't do much. Can I be honest? Yeah. It's an ugly looking piece of technology. Oh, I thought it was adorable. I don't like, it's, I don't like it's beady little nose. It doesn't have any eyes. And it's like, what dog is this? A basset hound? I, th I think it's an eye dog, babe. Yeah. But what's the breed inspired by? Dogs, dog kind. To me, it's giving basset hound. I could see that. The ears are a little too small for a basset hound. But You're I could right. See that. A dachshund. A, do a, a wiener. A wiener dog. Yeah. Well, Bring him back, babe. Maybe write a letter this time to the new president and say, Biden, bring back the eye dog. Bring back the eye dog. Wireless this time. That would be great. I think it's a good idea. But that's my crush of the week is the eye dog. Who out there had an eye dog and what did you use to blast on it? Did you have an iPod mini or um, a regular iPod? I had an iPod, um, the clip-on one. What was that one? Oh, the iPod scramble. Um, I had the iPod, the iPods, uh, iPod scramble egg, and I had the iPod <laughs> Touch. Uh, yeah, it was the iPod Shuffle, and you couldn't even see what you were. It was a flash drive, essentially. Yeah, I, I, I was late to the iPod game. My parents, I was like, "Please, mom," and they're like, "Here is a um a Zune." Yeah, I got nothing like that. That was that cool. But then I finally got the iPod Touch, and I love that. What's um? <laughs> what's your crush of the week? My crush of the week isn't a person either. It's a feeling. Okay, my crush of the week <laughs> is. It's a little controversial. Oh God. Due to recent events, but I won't let it fog my memory of good times um i'm crushing on airport energy okay i love the feeling of being in the airport i love the panic the stress the energy the beverages the shopping i love the outfits i love just the chaos of it all i love to complain the entire time while i'm going through it but once it's over i kind of miss it it's truly somewhere that feels intercontinental. It feels um, unlike any place. It's its own entity. It's um, an, uh, it's it's just got a real rhythm to it that I I crave. I haven't been in an airport in a couple of months now, and I'm already jonesing to be back in the hustle and bustle of any local airport I can get into. I love that. Um, I actually have a little um, monologue I wrote. If I could read it, <laughs> I thought I thought. Wait. 
<laughs> is that weird? No, I, I wouldn't say that it's not not weird, but it's very you. I thought the only way for me to really describe to you guys what I am feeling is to really put it into words in some sort of um, my prose. Okay. Some prose. I mean, my, <laughs> my ideal airport arrival. I literally can't even read it without laughing. I literally am I'm laughing. Yeah, sorry. I get there 1.5 hours before my flight. It's a quick flight, so I only have a carry on. <laughs> oh my God, TSA only has a 10 minute wait. How incredible. <laughs> I make pleasantries with the agent as I slip off my shoes and go through the body scanner. Oops, you saw my coochie. <laughs> I hop, skip, and jump to a local watering hole where they offer me a bit. Where they, uh, oh, sorry, I hop, skip, and a jump to a local watering hole where they have Michelob Ultra on tap. I look at my phone and my plane boards in exactly one hour. I place an order for fries, possibly a burger. Who knows? <laughs> I catch a slight buzz before I board Group Two. There is a perfect spot for my bag opposite side of my seat where I have an ILC and no one is in the middle of me and the next person. I have pre-selected one movie and four episodes of a show I am recently getting into. The perfect time. To, this is also the perfect time to start a new show. My flight is under four hours and it arrives on time. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. Um, it felt like a diary entry <laughs> from like a 10 year old who just got a crazy pen and a journal from the airport. <laughs> and um, you really took us on the journey that... I hope you manifest this and I hope I'm, I'm with you when we take said flight. That sounds incredible. And you do, you love to be at an airport only one and a half hours before the flight. Because it adds a sense of chaos that's exciting to feel a part of. Like, you know, you're going to make it, but it's like, oh my God, what if I don't? Yeah. I like, And I feel bad even saying this because there's been a lot of drama in the news with Southwest and there was those flights grounded everywhere for four hours. So I think people have a real disdain of airports. I haven't been touched by that poison yet. And I think if I do, then I'll feel differently. But um, I really enjoy making pleasantries with the TSA agents as they see my coochie. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's quite a time at the airport. I love having just a carry on. It's so simple, and I like when it goes over the opposite side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. And I like when I sit down. down in a row of three, and there's a middle seat in between us, and neither of us have to speak. I think also campers a really hot take and a hot tip for me is if you're going on a flight, it's a great time to start a brand new show because when you're on a flight and you're watching something, like you're really engrossed in it because there really isn't other distractions going on because you don't have service, right? Or like the Wi-Fi sucks. So like I actually watched the first season of white lotus um like a couple months ago on our trip back from bali and i watched like six seasons on that long flight and i was so obsessed with it because i was like only thing i could look at was my phone so like I, there was no distraction so it's like great to like get immersed into a show that's brand new because you really have to commit to be like do i like this but um yeah and that was within the first five minutes you're like i'm watching i'm watching white lotus and i look over and it's dick on your screen from the first was there? Yeah, from episode one where he's oh, in the rope. Balls. And you like you like close the screen really quick. You're like, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, oh God, it's gonna be a long flight. Well, it's not fair when a nude scene comes up on an airplane. I didn't know it was coming, okay? It's HBO. You know what they do with their diggling on that app? It's true. No, hey, that's true. Do I'll you, give you that. If if you take the stress out of being late for a flight, do you think you enjoy airport energy? I do. I like once we pass TSA, I'm like stressed up until we pass TSA. I I make sure that my terminal does in fact exist like that TikTok trend that's going around. Yes. That's so me. I just have to make sure that I see it. I'm like, okay, here we are. I'm going to go meander now. And you're so right. It's like, it's, it's a place where time and space count so much, but feel like they don't exist. You can't be late for your flight, but like one person's napping, the other one's writing an, a college essay. Someone else is getting whacked with their friends at the bar and no one's judging each other. Cause it's like, we don't know your story. We don't know where we're going. It's eight o'clock in the morning and you're wasted and taking shots. Babe, we're at the airport. I'm not even thinking twice. It's almost international waters. I don't care if I'm at LaGuardia. This feels like international waters. Yeah. And if you're and to travel with Jonathan is to know that at any point, if you miss him and you look around, where is he? He's at the Hudson looking at word searches. <laughs> He's buying a word search at the Hudson. This boy will always buy a word search at the Hudson, uh, at the Hudson or he's buying a book based on a movie. <laughs> I love word. I love a word search. I do. I like a word. I like a little game. I like a little activity. I'll watch something. Maybe I don't know. I you don't like watch. You don't watch. You really. You watch one movie. Maybe you're not here, a watcher. I and I don't take 
my medication when we go on flights because I'm usually drinking and I don't like to mix the two. And I, I really hesitate with sitting and watching, knowing that I'm stuck in my seat and I can't stand up and like walk to the bathroom whenever I feel like it. I mean, I know I can, but like, I feel I, if I'm doing something, time passes faster and my, my brain calms. I'm the opposite. I feel like playing playing with the words, which I'd be like bored after two minutes and I'm like, okay, like how much longer? I feel like I just have always been such like a TV watcher my entire life. Like I just like love to watch it. So like any excuse to not feel guilty about watching six hours of television, I'm really into. So See, yeah. And I'm a word search girl through and through. You are. I finished a complete book of word searches and I have a new one downstairs. Or a weird little app where you like are like cutting down trees or like. Oh, Spiral Roll. Spiral Roll. You I love, love Spiral Roll. Any game that's targeted at God knows who you love. Yeah. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the show where we talk about what songs we've been singing in the shower when we're naked and really Jeez. deep conditioning our hair. One song we've been humming while we're parallel parking. Just songs we've been obsessed with as of lately. And also every single song that we've mentioned in every single episode you can listen to for free on our Spotify playlist. It's called Camp Songs. It's linked in the description of this. Or on YouTube. You can watch all, If you don't have Spotify, you can watch them all on YouTube totally for free we just put it together because it's fun it's freaking fun it's freaking fun in games have freaking fun with that you freaking freak and there's a lot of people who've like l liked and downloaded the the spotify playlist so i was like go off everybody just listen to some bops in my humble onion they are the greatest songs that have ever existed oh i love that anyway my camp song of the week is gui by lady gaga Touch me, touch me, don't be sweet. Love me, love me, please retweet. If you guys haven't listened to it, I feel like most people have. It was, I think, the best song that came off of the 2013 album Art Pop. Yeah, it definitely was the lead track for sure. It was the, it was I, the single too. I think Applause was. Oh, was Applause first? Yeah, I think so. Either way, a fantastic song with an even crazier video. Yeah, oh my God, the video, which they filmed, I wrote it down. Uh, okay, so the music video was filmed at the Hearst Castle, which is absolutely gorgeous. I feel like I've seen it before featured in stuff. It hadn't been featured since the 1960s in any film. I thought it was the I thought it was the Versailles. No. Yeah. No, We're, it's in California. Oh, it's in California. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's giving Versailles. Yeah. Oh my god, it's absolutely stunning. There's at least at least 10 gallons of water in that giant pool. Well, what's the weirdest part about the video? I don't think it's the castle, babe. Oh, it's the cast because for some reason they I know I didn't even get to that part. It's the cast which is literally the cast of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think Season two, it absolutely was season two because Carlisle was there. Oh, you're right. It was. They were only there for that one. It was Car season Carlton. Two. Carlton. Or were they season three? I don't know. It doesn't even matter. Carlton's in it though. Lisa Vanderpump was in it. Kim was in it. Kyle Richards was in it. If you watch the Joyce show. Joyce wasn't though, little pig. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and he's the, yeah, that's from the show. He, you're not calling someone a little pig. It's from the show. I swear to God. I swear to God. But um, hey, great video. Andy is in the clouds. And Andy the Cohen. Sun. Yeah. He's the son. He's the son, the father, and the Holy Spirit. Such a great song. Oh my God, I love that song so much. Um, yeah, so you were listening to it on Peloton, and I just I was listening to it on repeat and I couldn't stop myself. G U Y. It's a classic Gaga song. It's that Gaga energy. If you love Gaga, you're in a love guy. I'm sure most of you already know it, and maybe it's time to revisit it. Oh my god, everybody should revisit it. The, my favorite part, I'll let you go, but my favorite part is the part where she's like, I don't need to be on top to know I'm worth it because I'm strong enough to know the truth. You know that part? Yeah. I just want it to be hot because I'm blessed when I'm in love and I'm in love with you. Why did you go so why didn't you go powerful at the end of that? Why did you really pull back? It was my artistic license. Were you getting a little nervous? No, I, it was my artistic license, baby. And I was I really going just, I was going to say I thought it sounded really nice. Oh, thank you. You had a really good pitch. I had my talons out. I was ready to fight and protect my artistic license. Um, but <laughs> what's your camp song? No, I love that song. It was a good song. Stop being so defensive. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, my song is an indie artist, a song that people have probably never heard before. But if you have, that would be pretty cool. It's called You Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette. Oh, is have she you heard new? Of her? Yeah, she's new on the charts. No, Interesting. Um, um, so I was listening to it this morning on full volume in my headphones, and I think it's the only way to listen to this song. I think to feel her anger and rage in this beautiful song, um, you have to listen to it at full volume, like by yourself. And it just, it genuinely, I'm not even joking. I'm getting emotional again. It takes my breath away. 
it is just, it's so incredible. There's like, I don't think there's like a more personal song. Like she said, no, I'm not writing this for anyone but me. Like you can't even, I really identify with most parts of it. Like I feel like you can try to, but some of it is just written like, okay, this is too personal. Like she's not even trying to like, it's almost like therapeutic just for her. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, yeah. That, make, that makes total sense. I feel like a lot of the Jagged Little Pill is like such a great album. It's so, it, it will. So like, I'll, let me kind of go through a couple lines that I like laugh. Please do. Okay. I'm sure she'd make a really excellent lover. When she, when she says that about that woman, can you imagine being Dave Coulier's like girl at the time being like, oh shit, like this is like shots fired at me, the way she says it, I like it like radiates through my body. Um, when she says, um, you seem very well, things look peaceful, I'm not quite as well. I thought you should know. Like, she's like really coming for him in like the most insane way. Um, oh, I hate to bug you in the middle of dinner. Something tells me she wasn't upset to bug him in the middle of dinner, right? And something tells me that that happened. I feel like she called and he was like, I'm in the middle of dinner. I feel like there's a specific story there. There is a story there, of course. And are you thinking of me when you fuck her? Oh my God. So obviously, I'm sure all of you know this song. It's an incredible song. But I was like, let me do a little bit of a deep dive. I want to learn more about her and like what was going on in her life. Obviously, we all know it's about Dave Cooley. If you didn't know, it's Uncle Joey from Full House. And this is really weird. Are you ready for this? Please. So how old do you think she was when she wrote that song? I want to say 19. She was 20 years old yeah. when she wrote that song in 1994. 20 years old. I cannot believe it, okay? And she was writing about when she dated Dave in guess what year? What? 1992. She was 17 slash 18 when she dated him. And he was 32 slash 33. Oh. How manipulative of him. You know what I mean? Like, she's basically a child at this point, and you mess with her that bad. And for him to be like, he's really played the card being like, oh, I guess I was, I guess I interpreted it differently. And he's like really owned up to it, being like, I feel really bad. I just didn't see it in that light. But I feel like she was like literally the OG Taylor Swift. She's like, I'm going to write an anthem about you and like ruin you. But like, I don't even think he even understood the repercussions of like how like how bad it was yeah does that make sense yeah that makes total sense and it's also kind of nuts how incredible of a writer she was at that age because that entire album i think some of them were, were written a little bit later on but when she was like trying to get it and i only know because i saw her live so she was talking about it like so many so many labels didn't want to pick her up because they didn't they thought her writing was like immature and she was like too young and they like didn't love the album as a whole and i'm like now you got a like broadway shows yeah after that album it's oh my god such a great album and yeah i saw her live and it was very emotional very emotional um right. one take from ballard i don't know I, I think ballard was either her like writing partner or like the producer when he was writing it um it was 11 o'clock at night she sang it once we were exhausted that's it that's the record that's the vocals that was one time throw. That's not That entire. And he goes back. He's like, at sometimes I hear it. It's a little pitchy. The vocals are a little hot in certain areas, but it was just, that was the emotion. And she thought by going in and re-recording it was going to make it feel inauthentic or corny. So she's like, I'm running this through once. That is a one take. She ran it through and was like, baby, I'm done. Drop the mic. And after hearing that and listening to it back, I'm like, oh my God. She like, that was a cathartic. She had to like, let it out and be like, this is it. This is how I feel in this moment, and I can't move past this until I just do this. That's nuts. Isn't it nuts? I had no idea. And she said, it was a lot easier for me to be angry and feel the power from that anger versus the broken, horrified woman on the floor. Mm. Oh, my mm. God. 20 years old. 20 years old. I had no idea she was that young when she said that. I just, I love her so much. That song means so much to me. Um, one of my favorite TikTok videos I've ever made of all time was that song. I dress up as a witch, um, a being, I don't know, like, I don't know, a, a witch and her husband and the husband accused her of being a, a witch. And she was like, oh, you want to think I'm a witch? I'm going to be a witch for your ass. And I dress up in colonial garb and it's just so funny. And I love that video so much. And this song just means so much to me. And um, if you listen to it at full volume with your headphones in, it's, it'll take you on a journey. But Next time you listen to it, think about how those one take. I feel like for the any time that I listen to that and someone else is in the room, I'll probably retell it to you. 
feel like that's going to be a fact that I'm going to be spitting left and right. Like everyone <laughs> needs to know. Hey, this was a one take wonder. Did you know? Yeah. Did you know? Well, I like the hell idea where she was like, if I do it again, it's not it's not going to be the same. It's yeah. not going to evoke the same emotion. So Alanis Morissette, if you want to come to Camp Shady Birch and sing at our Christmas Cantana this year, we do have an opening spot. Um, Trisha Paytas did back out for Hot Girl Christmas. So we're going to need you to sing Oh Holy Night. Or we also have, what was it available? Um, Rock Another Christmas Tree. Up to you. Balls in your court. Love you. Scary stories around the campfire. Ring, ding, ring, ding, ding, ding. Hello? The call is coming from inside the house. Did that make sense? <laughs> Why would he, why would the killer tell the babysitter? It makes sense. I get it. You told me to say something about the call coming from the house. I don't want to get into this right now. It doesn't even matter. This is scary stories. I I want to make this scary for once. It is scary and spooky. Okay, well, this story you're about to read is definitely a doozy. How about you just hop right into it? Go for it. Okay, so this is the part of the show where we read emails from you guys, usually embarrassing stories, but they can be scary too, poop or non-poop related. You can send that in to campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Com. So this writer wrote in. This one's a little bit long, but stick with me. Six years ago, I decided I wanted a dog. I was searching randomly on Craigslist one day, and I saw that a guy was selling an eight-month-old Western Terrier slash poodle puppy for $300. Deal. Based off the cadence of the post, it seemed genuine, so I emailed him, and next thing you know, I'm heading to Queens to pick up a puppy. When I got there, the puppy looked so excited to see me. My heart became soup, and it was love at first sight. Oh, soup heart. I've never heard that said out loud, and I love that. Sorry. You make, you make my heart turn into soup. Oh, you make my heart chowder. <laughs> we had chowder for lunch, guys. Okay, so then she goes on into details about um, she asked why this guy was rehoming the puppy, and he said that his girlfriend had – he had bought it for his girlfriend, and they had just, like, broke up before he could give the gift this – the seller already had a dog and wasn't ready to take care of a puppy and his current dog without a girlfriend in the situation. Yep. So that's where our listener, our fellow camper comes in and she's like, okay, that's fine. I'll take, I'll take the dog. So about three months into me having Milo, which was the original name of the dog, the guy who sold him to me reached out via text and asked how Milo was doing. I told the guy that he was doing great. We spoke about potentially getting our dogs together since they had built a bond and it would just be cute. That is cute. Then the seller asked for an updated picture of Milo to see how much he'd grown. I click on the camera button to pull up my recent photos as I'd been taking so many of Milo since I had gotten him. I try to swipe up so that little box at the bottom would expand to my photos option, but instead what happened is a nude I had recently taken gets selected and is now being held under my thumb. So now you're panicking because it's like what happens when I let go of my thumb? Is it going to send? Is it going to delete? Okay. So she says, a full-blown close-up vagine photo is hovering over our text conversation. <laughs> and I'm afraid to move my to remove my finger from the screen. I try to move it back to the area where the photos are. I let go and it sends. Oh, no. I immediately start freaking out. I contemplated blocking him. I think I blacked out a little. That's what I, I wouldn't always do. I probably, what do you do? Well, nowadays you can unsend it. But yeah. this was six years ago. So I start shooting him text messages back to back saying, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. To be honest, it wasn't even about what he saw. But my anxiety was all about him thinking I did it on purpose. So after 58, oh, my God, I'm sorry, text messages, he finally responds, quote, ha ha, we're all adults here. It happens. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't see that. Still down to let the dogs play. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, right. <laughs> How can you pretend he didn't see the machine? You saw the machine. That's what she said. She said, first off, yeah, right. Bitch, adults we are, but you just saw the most intimate part of me. Thank you for being so cool about it. But we are never meeting up. My anxiety could never. Yeah, how are you going to be cool after that? Be like, oh, we could go get coffee and like throw a ball to my dog. It's like, I, I've i seen your labium lab menorah. Labia menorah. Yeah, you can't move on from that. You just simply can't. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so I didn't respond, and he never reached out again. Uh, hope you're well to the boy who could have been my friend, but instead got a photo of my kitty when he asked for a photo of my dog. The end. Quote, I'm so sorry. Signed, taking nudes in cabin 19. <laughs> I love, wait, what did she say? Let's read that again. What was the header email of the call? Okay, so that wasn't the header of the email. The header of the email was, he asked for photos of my dog. I sent him pictures of my kitty. 
wait, that was really clever, Camper. And I need you to know, like, that was a really funny poll in for the email. And I was like, I just want you to know, like, you are a crafty writer and you should continue to write for us. Um, so if you want to be a staff writer at the camp and write little articles about um, the moss and the local flora <laughs> of fauna on camp, we'd love to publish that in our newsletter that we don't actually have. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, love, I just thought it was really funny. I mm -hmm. think it's great when you guys write in and you have your jokes because they're I, I laugh at them. I think that's hysterical. So I know. And it's so funny too because so many people have so many embarrassing moments. And when something happens to you and you replay it and it was literally like years ago and you just keep replaying it. I think it's nice when you hear other people's embarrassing stories. It's yeah. cathartic for the person writing. It's cathartic for everyone listening because they're like, hey, at least that wasn't me. And then the person writing is just like, hey, other people have written worse stuff. So you guys send them on in, campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening, campers. It was another great week at Camp Shady Birch. We'll be back next week with some more fun for all of you. And that's it for now, right? Yeah. If you guys could leave five-star reviews if you'd like to, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all the kind um, reviews that you've been leaving for us. It, it, it means a lot to us. So thank you. It does. And with that, I would say, lights, lights out, out, campers. campers.